Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Umbrel flagship hardware and a cheaper alternative if you're looking to set up and deploy your own BTC node. This will help decentralize the network and can also serve as your own personal solo mining pool. I'll keep it short and to the point. Alright, let's take a look at the Umbrel homepage. You can see they offer their hardware for $429, which isn't too bad. Now, we're going to set this up to use as a BTC node slash pool. However, it has many other useful applications. You could use it as your own personal cloud server, um, which you could use for store storing and saving your files, streaming, home automation, and so much more. Just take a look at their app store. There's, they have lots to offer. Let's take a moment and check out the recommended specs to run this hardware. It recommends quad core or higher, 16 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of storage, SSD, and an internet connection. Now, let's check out an alternative to the Umbrel hardware for around half the price. I've previously purchased a few of these machines used off of eBay. These are great little machines and they meet most of the requirements. i7 CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the included drive is a little bit too small, but that's easy to swap out for something larger, as two terabytes is the minimum. All right, now we need to start the install process. Navigate back to Umbrel's page and scroll to the bottom. Look for the GitHub logo and click it. Now we want to look on the right side of the page for releases, which will take us to this page. We need to find the flavor that matches our hardware as there are quite a few options. So I'm going to select Umbrel OS AMD64 USB installer. So this is designed to work on the Intel i7 CPUs. After that downloads, we need a way to flash this to a thumb drive. You may have your own tools for this. Fantastic. If not, what we're going to use is Etcher. You can download it from their website. Check the comments for the link to make sure you're going to the right place. Now, this is going to be ran on your PC. It's just a tool for flashing the image to the USB stick. So download the appropriate version for your workstation. For me, I want Windows x86 64. After the download is finished, proceed to install. There's nothing special to show here, just perform the default installation and you're good to go. Now launch Etcher, and in the first spot select your ISO image, which we downloaded previously. Before you click select target, make sure you have at least a 16 gigabyte USB drive in your machine. Click Select Target. Now right away I can see my USB device and two hidden devices. If you click on Show Hidden, you can view these, but be careful. These are typically system drives or other drives on your machine that are already in use. While I'm showing you this, make sure to rehide it so you don't click or select any of them by accident. Now select your USB device. Be warned, this will erase the entire USB stick and replace it with the Umbrel installer. Once that completes, eject and remove the drive and plug it into your hardware that will be used for this installation. After the flash drive is inserted, power on the machine and you may have to spam F10, F12, possibly F2 or delete to enter the boot manager. Once we are in the boot manager, select the USB drive as the boot option. This will take you to the following screen. It's asking where to install. Select the number for the internal drive. In my case, the number was one. Press enter. This will start the copy slash install process. It takes about five minutes or so, and you'll see this information on the screen as it progresses. Once finished, it will instruct you to remove the USB media and reboot the machine. Once the machine finishes rebooting, you'll see this information displayed on the screen. On this page, it tells us our IP is 192.168.90.102. That's the IP where we can reach the web instance we just installed. This IP will be different based on your network. And also, make sure to add a DHCP reservation to reserve this IP address for this machine so it won't change in the future. After navigating to our local address and web browser, we need to configure the machine. First, enter your desired username and a password. Click Create. 
Now we are inside the OS. Right on the dashboard we see Bitcoin node. Click it. You can scroll through and check out some of the info and screenshots as well as patch notes. Then click install back at the top. After it finishes, click open. Now you will see it begin to sync. Let this run. It will take roughly 36 to 48 hours, depending on your internet speed, to complete the synchronization process. There is nothing else you can do at this point until this completes. All right, welcome back. I'll assume you have finished the Bitcoin node sync and you should see 100% for synchronized. Next, go back to the App Store and search for public pool. We're gonna go ahead and type in public. Click Install, and once complete, click Open. This takes you to your pool with connection info. Now navigate to the device that will be mining and enter the details. So we're going to go ahead and copy our pool address using our internal IP address and paste that information into our miner. Then we're going to copy the port and copy that into our miner configuration. For this demo, I will use the donation address. You should not do this. This is only for the demo. Use your own BTC Bitcoin wallet address. And then you can simply enter X for the password. Since I'm on a BitX, it requires a fallback pool. Again, just for this demo, I'm going to set my fallback pool with the same information as my primary pool. You should set this to a different pool just in case your node or pool goes down for any reason. Save and restart your miner to apply the changes. Very soon after, you should see your miner start to populate on your pool with information about their hash rate and the largest successfully solved difficulty. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on X.